Hi everyone and welcome to another Greeny Flix Adventure 8 video and today I've got both the, my Leica M240 and that's a P variety here and the Leica M10R black paint version. So the question is why did I get the M10R and what am I going to do with my M240P? I recently did an unboxing of the black paint version M10R and there will be a link to the video above so at least you'll be able to see that and uh, that was quite exciting to get my hands on that so uh, the story behind this is that I've had the the M240P for some time now probably about two or three years I've bought it second hand and I've been very very happy with it and I've refrained from upgrading or updating to the M10 or the M10P or the M10R but when the M10R black paint version came out well that took me over the edge I had all sorts of expectations of what the difference would be between these two cameras uh, I also recently took the M240P out on safari into Outback Australia and Central Australia uh, where I was just this was my main camera or well, other than the smartphone and the GoPro this is the one that was taking all the stills and there's a video also up there in the description or below of the results that I got from using this camera and I actually used an old Leica 35 Simulcron F2 lens the vintage lens of 1974 75 somewhere around there so that was a lot of fun however now we've got the M10R so what are the differences one of the things I'd like to do on Safari when I go on my trips, uh, whether they be four-wheel drive trips uh, in Outback Australia or motorcycle trips here in Australia or anywhere around the world, is I'd like to take night photography, um, long exposures, whether it be um, of the stars or whether it be in just really dimly lit situations. Now, what I found with my Leica 240P here, is that in most situations it would produce a wonderful result and it's only in the really extreme conditions of photographing the night skies the milky way is where i felt this was a little bit lacking the limitation seems to be in the length of exposure that you can do and how the software handles those low light conditions if you're shooting at iso 200 for example the maximum exposure time that you can have is 60 seconds and then if you back off to uh, say ISO 800 then you're limited to 15 seconds so you go two stops one way then you have to go two stops the other way so if it's 200 ISO two stops to 800 400 800 then your maximum exposure time also drops from 60 seconds to 30 seconds to 15 seconds and then if you go to ISO 1600 then you're limited to eight second exposure so either way you're limited by that the software and the way it handles the iso and the processing and everything else that goes in there so i found that shooting the milky way i'd have to uh, i'd need a fast lens is along the short of it if i went for a 2.8 lens then it would be underexposed and I'd really be pushing the ISO higher to try and get the shot. If I had 1.4 lens, then that's obviously handling the situation much better. So yes, I could take the Milky Way, I could take night skies, but I felt just a bit short with the, the, the length of exposure that I could get and uh, the dynamic range of the sensor, I suppose. Now with the M10, coming out and the M10P uh, from reviews that I saw I, there were some improvements in that area but it wasn't enough for me to actually make the change or to get the M10P when the M10R came out that's my understanding again there was that again there was an improvement there so the M10R was one that I had my eye on for some time since it was released 
And uh, so when the black paint version came out, I really like the idea that as this black paint starts to uh, wear from its use, that the brass starts to show up. So that's <laughs> so it was the cosmetics that I wanted, as well as the the low light photography that I was particularly interested in the difference between the M10R and the M240P. So having said all that, um, how does the Leica M10R handle low exposures? Well, at 100 ISO, I think you can go to 16 minutes. So at 200 ISO, that would make it eight minutes. It can handle a longer exposure by three stops. So instead of at 200 ISO shooting at one minute, which is the M240P, it can go two, four, eight minute. You can do an eight minute exposure at 200 ISO. So for the same aperture, you can have a much longer exposure and get more light in and process that image. So that's a big bonus for me in that low light photography. Here's my third Leica. <laughs> this is the film Leica. This is the MP. And now if you want to get a longer exposure with film, all you have to do is just have a cable release and just press the shutter and put on bulb and then keep it open for as long as you like because the processing is done with the light in reacting with the film. With the digital Leicas, it's limited by the software, so you can put a cable release on there and you can hold the shutter open um, with the cable release, but once it gets to the maximum processing time, it just shuts it off. So it doesn't matter what the cable release is doing, it's governed by the software. So that's why I wanted slow light capability and that's a that would be reason enough to go for the m10r over the m240p okay well what about the physically what's the difference between these cameras uh, other than the lenses that i've got right now i've got the similux 1.450 millimeter and the similux 35 millimeter 1.4 so other than those lenses um okay it's a silver lens on a silver body good reason to keep it um again it's a, uh, a really practical camera it's got the video so i have no intentions of of um selling this camera at this stage um because i will continue to use it for its its capabilities its looks and the video function so what's the difference in size well um there's a couple of photos that i took uh, earlier so you'll be able to see that in the video as well so the M240 is, I think, about um, three millimeters, we're about two or three millimeters thicker. As far as its um, height and width, it's much the same. And as far as its weight is concerned, I think maybe is the M10R is a little bit lighter, but not much. The battery life on the M240P is outstanding. It has a larger battery than the m10r and i guess it needs a larger battery for the video but if you're not using the video function this large battery lasts um with that i haven't done the test yet but the first impressions were that it lasts about twice as long as on the m10r but i will do a test of some kind and just see what the difference is uh, in the battery life of the two cameras what I like about the M240P is it's really quite quiet. So there's my microphone. That's the M240 and that's shooting at 125. All right, so let's uh, put the M10R on 125 and let's see how that sounds. That was a complete surprise. I could not believe how quiet the M10R is. It's incredible. I believe that the M10P, that's when the quiet shutter came uh, on, or that was one of the features of the M10P over the original M10. And the M10R shares the same shutter. It's so quiet, it's so impressive. All right, so it was a low light handling, uh, a bonus was how quiet it was, 
Um, the cosmetics was the reason also what I wanted in this. What are the stuff? Okay. One thing you do lose that the M240P has, and that has the video function. The good thing about the video function is that's really easy to operate. All you have to do is just press the button and you start videoing. That's great. It's got no anti-shakes. Uh, so if you're on a tripod, it's great. Um, you can't get an external microphone. I don't have that which means that the microphone is subject to wind noise. You have to always be careful with that. However, there is video and I do use it occasionally. There is no video on the M10R, so that's something that is lost, but uh, it's, that's no real concern to me. So, oh yes, okay, the obvious thing. Um, the M240P is 24 megapixel. Uh, M10R is 40 megapixel. From my past experience with other cameras, so I have also Nikon range of cameras. I've got the, uh, I remember buying the D700, for example, that's back in 2008. That's a 12 megapixel camera. And then about four years ago, I bought the uh, Nikon D850, which is a 47 megapixel camera. I was amazed how good the D700 was relative to the D850, yes, the D850 is far better, but they were so close anyway, as far as the image is concerned. So other than if you're blowing up this, the photos to, uh, to large printed sizes, um, in most situations, you cannot tell the difference. Um, just from a resolution point of view, particularly on computers and television screens and alike, mobile phones, mobile devices. So I'm not expecting a huge amount of difference uh, in viewing the images because it's all electronic images that we tend to view these days unless they are printed in some manner or form. However, I will do some tests in future videos uh, just to see how much of a difference we can actually pick up between the two cameras. In future videos, I'll be taking some shots uh, with the M10R and just taking out my first shoot. and. Um, a video will be on that out soon so you'll see that and then I'll also do some more videos with comparing the two cameras so if you do have the M240P or the M240 and you are tempted to change over to the M10R well then that might help you in your decision process as well if it's the first time to my channel please do subscribe uh, I really welcome your support. Um, do click like, uh, thumbs up if you like these videos and would like to maybe see more on my channel. Then also press notifications in the subscription if you haven't already subscribed. And then at least you'll be notified when the new videos are out. Anyway, uh, thank you again for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video when I try to go out for my first shoot with the M10R Black Paint Limited Edition. Cheers.